the final application here we're going to consider for linear models of differential equations is um, series circuits. And the two particular types of uh, circuits that are in series um, are what we're going to consider are the L, what are known as LR and RC circuits. The top one here is an illustration of an, R, an LR circuit where you have an energy source, could be a battery, or it could be alternating current um, as well. And um, the current's being fed to an inductor, indicated here, uh, with an inductance um, uh, level of L and as well as in series with a resistor down here, R. L uh, inductors are typically used to in store energy using magnetic fields, and R is a, uh, resistors are typically absorbing energy for heating units, your hair dryer, things like that. So it's a way of absorbing energy to be used um, for particular functions. So um, the other circuit down here is uh, called an RC circuit. Again, everything's in series, connected end to end energy source or resistor and then this is a representation of a capacitor with capacitance C and um, capacitors also are energy storage units um, and uh, but they're uh, uh, but they're using electronic fields to store the energy These are illustration of two plates that are actually using so um, so capacitance store energy a little bit different than the the, the coils wrapped around uh, different conductors for um, uh, an inductor. But the point of the exercise is to understand how to model um, the conservation of, of energy through these series circuits in terms of the voltage flow. And uh, if we looked at the top circuit, the LR circuit, you can show with what are known as Kirchhoff voltage laws that uh, for the top circuit, the inductance um, L, um, that quantity times the rate of change of the current in the circuit, di dt, um, plus the resistance times the current I would have to be the same as the energy source. In other words, the voltage generated by the energy source represents E of t through time. So E represents external voltage. Um, sometimes um, this current here, I, is called the response of the system. So that's a common in, in circuits which many of you will probably take, 301. Um, you'll talk about the response of a system in terms of that, that, that particular parameter. So that's obviously a differential equation involving the current, but it's based on the conservation of voltage through the system. So that's one particular equation that's useful for uh, LR circuits. For RC circuits, it's a little bit different. Um, the relationship of the voltage uh, is a little bit different for the, uh, again, this is for LR. Now if we'll look at the RC case of resistance and capacitance, which you'd have here, again, due to Ohm's law, R times I would be the voltage there, but for the capacitance, it'd be one over C times the charge. And that would be equal to, again, the energy supplied externally. But we also know a relationship between the charge um, the, in the system versus the current, and that is that current basically is how the charge changes. Current is zero if you're if the rate of change of the charge uh, is if if the if the charge ever becomes constant your current's going to be zero. So another way of transforming this equation then for differential purposes is that you could rewrite this as R times then dQ dt plus one over C times Q is equal to E of t and now you have a differential equation in Q which is the charge of the system. All right. So either way, you have two linear differential equations to model um, uh, uh, the flow of voltage um, in these series circuits. So we're going to do a particular example, and um, the example we're going to do is going to be an LR circuit. Um, so we're going to do the first one. So we're going to do an application of this first equation up here. So let's look at an example. And in this example, I'll just simply draw it. Suppose we had a 12 volt battery. Take that 12 volt battery, connect it to um, an inductance of the units or Henry. So we'll have a half Henry there, one half H. And that is in series with a resistance of 10 ohms. Okay, And it's like a big omega. So those are values for those particular constants we mentioned before. So in this particular problem, L is equal to 1 half, R is equal to 10. Then we apply the differential equation we have up here. 
what you would have then is one half times the rate of change of the current, di dt, plus 10 times i has to be the external voltage, which in this case is a battery, which is 12. We also know that initially the current, we're going to assume the current is zero. So I of zero will be zero. Uh, cleaning this up a little bit, you'd have that di dt um, plus 20i equals 24. Just multiply them by two. Use your integration factor of, that would be e to the 20 integral dt because you see the p function there is just the constant 20. So your integrating factor is just going to be e to the 20 t power. And you can show, as we've done with solving linear differential equations, the integrating factors, basically this will turn out to be the left-hand side would be your integrating factor times the solution, or in this case the response i, will end up being 24 times e to times that integrating factor, e to the 20 t. So, Ultimately, you can show um, with some reduction that the current function E of t would be 6 fifths plus C, the integration constant, E to the minus 20 t. Just after you've done some work and reduction, just like you've done in the other, uh, other problems or homework, you would get a, a problem. Uh, you would get a solution like that. And then now use the fact that the current, we're going to assume the current initially is zero. If you do that, that'll force the constant then to be negative 6 over 5. So ultimately, what the response function for your current looks like is 6 fifths minus 6 fifths times e to the minus 20 to the t power. You could rewrite that if you want as 6 fifths times the quantity 1 minus e to the minus 20 over t power. The reason why that's kind of nice to write that way is you can see what's going to happen. As t goes to infinity, as time marches forward in this circuit, you could see that the current is eventually going to converge to what? This term will eventually go to zero, right? That's e to the minus 20 over t. So ultimately, as t, as t goes to zero, the current will approach 6 fifths and the unit is amperes. Okay. So, um, Sometimes in circuit analysis, these have these uh, uh, the six fifths term has a particular name. This is sometimes called the steady state, because that's ultimately what the current's going to converge to. And this other term that decays away, goes to zero, is sometimes called the transient term. So you have the steady state term of six fifths. And you have the transient term of this uh, 1 minus e to the minus 20 over t power, which is essentially going to go to 0. So that's a nice application of an LR circuit equation that conserves voltage.